What's up, guys? Um, wanted to drop this video about Deion Sanders and the season. Um, when the when they first started out, um, and welcome everybody, welcome all the new people that might drop by. Don't forget to share, like, subscribe, all that good stuff. Um, moving towards a thousand, so keep it going for me. Um. You know, when the season first started, I think around the second or third game, I made a video about, you know, the whole thing with Deion Sanders in Colorado, right? And, um, you know, my major is in psychology, but I also specialized in sports psychology, and you know, to get my master's. You see what I mean? And so I understand the importance of, like, a team buying into a coach especially a new coach. See, the one thing that they failed to realize, and I, and I was hoping that maybe Deion Sanders might have caught my video because if he did, he could have fixed that situation and they would have won this season. That team needs a sports like They do need a bigger line, obviously, but besides that, they need a sports psychologist on that team. You see what I mean? Because... Um, yeah, you can get players to buy into a person, right? You can do that, and we've seen that happen. Um, for instance, I'll give you another great example. When Michael Jordan was um, working with the Wizards, right? See, those people have bought into that person. But... You, it's, it's a difference between a team buying into a person and a team buying into a coach. You see what I mean? Because for him to have said seven weeks in a row that he feels like um, the players are not coming out ready to go um, and they're not getting going into the second half, that means that they haven't bought into the coach. See? Because any any player, obviously, if he's telling the media they're not doing that, he's telling them that seven weeks in a row, that means they're not listening to him. But they respect him, probably idolize him. But that has nothing to do with being a good coach. You see what I mean? Just like when Michael Jordan was trying to do his thing. Had nothing to do with how much those people idolize it and, or respect him. You take Phil Jackson, right? I don't think Phil Jackson is really that much better than any other coach out there, but he has so much experience in high-pressure situations. You see what I mean? He's won championships like crazy. So that makes him a better coach, believe it or not. Even though if you were to take him and put him in another person's body, they could do the same thing that he's doing and probably wouldn't win championships. One of the reasons why Phil Jackson is a great coach is because he gets the players to buy into his concept. I don't care if you're Michael Jordan. I don't care if you're fucking Kobe Bryant. You're going to listen to what Phil Jackson says. You might have an attitude about it. You could be the greatest athlete on the planet and you're still going to follow Phil Jackson. You see what I mean? If he gets pissed off on the sidelines, something's wrong. And for Deion Sanders to be pissed off for seven weeks, right, and still saying the same thing, mm -mm, that lets you know, okay, he hasn't. He himself needs a sports psychologist as well. See, the team needs one and the coach needs one. And I hope Dion gets this message. Hey, Dion, I'm available, bro. <laughs> you can fly me on out to Colorado anytime. I'll come on out there, you know, get you and that team to buy into each other. Dion Sanders has to buy into the team. You see what I mean? And there's a whole other dynamic that needs to be talked about. Um, the sports psychologist would need to talk to the team about how they feel about the quarterback situation. Because some of those kids don't feel the same way about that quarterback. They all got different feelings, and that, that needs to come together. Because I feel, honestly, that 
that's part of the separation um, between what Dion wants and what he actually sees on the field. That conversation needs to be had between Dion Sanders and a sports psychologist on how he should speak about his son in public, how he should, um, uh, what kind of attitude he's displaying towards his son on and off the field matters to the rest of the team. And I'm not saying that Deion Sanders did anything wrong with the way he handled the whole situation with his son being the quarterback, but at the same time, it could have been handled a lot better, a lot smoother. You see what I mean? I've been on teams where the son has been, you know, the um, coach's son or whatever, right? And, And sometimes it works out, sometimes it doesn't. In this case, it didn't. And um, I really, really enjoyed the whole season. This is the first college season that I've been back watching college football. We actually watched like five games. Um, You have to go all the way back to like Herschel Walker and shit. (laughs) Because I stopped watching college football. Then I stopped watching football altogether and just became, you know, I was just all NBA. But this season was exciting from... Uh, for me to get back into football just to watch those few games, I'm going to definitely be – um, I have somebody to root for now. You know what I mean? Like uh, Deion Sanders, I think, brought a lot of people to the game, um, to college football. And uh, I was glad to – I enjoyed the season. And um, I can't wait to see what he does next because I know Deion is not about that losing. You see what I mean? That's just not going to happen twice in a row. That's not going to happen. So, um, I wanted to drop this video. And once again, Deion Sanders, if by some crazy, wild coincidence, this video ends up on your computer, I want you to leave me a comment, okay? And some kind of way that I can get in touch with you. And I would love to come talk to your team and be the sports psychologist for Colorado. I played professional sports myself. I was a professional tennis player. So um, you can imagine what it goes in, what goes into that. You know, there ain't nobody to blame. You can't blame nobody when you play tennis. And um, like I said, hey. Hit me up, Dion. I'm Ramo Retract, the baddest man on YouTube.